All right, we should be live. We're back. We're working on Yigra, Eater of All. Here it is, in case you haven't seen it yet. And we are at 207 cards, and we spells specifically. Uh, this is not counting any non-basic lands we've picked out, so we need to cut another 147 cards off this list. <clears throat> so, you know... More than three for every one we want to keep. <clears throat> so yesterday we did the removal spells that uh, specifically hit artifacts. Well, we did all of the removal spells that can hit artifacts and enchantments, skipping over the ones that could hit um, creatures, planeswalkers, other card types, because I wanted to see how many cards we had that kill our opponent's stuff if Yeager is out. And then we'll do another list that kills our opponent's creatures when Yigra's not out. And then we'll figure out, like, most of the overlap is going to stay. The things that destroy all permanent types. So <clears throat> our Assassin's Trophy, Wind Grace's Judgment, uh, Casualties of War package is staying firmly ensconced. And we're almost definitely going to keep, like, the other things that are in the same vein. So Mortality Spear, Atomize, Death Claw those cards, but we'll probably wind up keeping, we're definitely keeping some number of the mass artifact removal spells, like the ones that we still have on the list are almost definitely making it to the end, um, Seeds of Innocence, um, The Green Season, and Creeping Corrosion, since those work wonders with our commander, like, literally everything is dead, except our commander, and our commander is huge because everything just died. That That is the goal. Um, so do we want to do the other removal package then? Like, the things that get rid of creatures and other stuff? But primarily focusing on the creature side this time? Because I think we do. I think I want to know where I stand with all of that. So, grab Grave Pact... That's definitely killing our opponent's creatures. Uh, Pernicious Deed is one of the catch-all ones. Yeah, there might be a tiny bit of room where we get rid of one of the worst remove anything cards in favor of having the more specific ones that are cheaper or something, but or that are doing their job really well at getting rid of one type or the other, in much the same way that I'm planning on running the three that can just kill all artifacts if we need to, I'm probably going to be down for, like, a couple creature removal spells that are just more efficient than our four plus drop kill any permanent type removal spells. Uh, none of these are creature kill. I left Gisa off of the, or not Gisa, Glissa, off of the, um... Artifact Destruction list, didn't I? I left her off and I missed one of the other ones too, the Dinosaur. Alright, copy her. Um, pop down here. Alright, I don't think she was on this list. Yep, yeah, she would have been right here. Hey, too many cards. Alright. Back to the other Glissa. Yeah. Alright, removal spells. Hmm. Savra certainly can be a repeatable removal spell. She is a sacrifice removal, similar to Grave Pack, but that doesn't stop Grave Pack from being on the list. And she's very similarly doing a like, she does a very similar thing, rather, but not quite the same. We do need uh, Yigra or some other sacrifice outlet in play. The creatures have to be black, and we have to be able to pay... Oh, we have to be able to pay two life, right. She doesn't require a mana investment, so yeah, it's probably fine. There will be some decks where she's not particularly good against them, but that's true for Grave Pact and... Um, Dictate of Erebos also, and if you combine enough of them, even the decks that are really good at going wide are going to start feeling the pressure 
when, you know, sacrificing a Bitter Blossom token or something turns into they lose three creatures. We got Imp's Mischief, Woodfall Primus can't hit creatures. Avenger of Zendikar, Exsanguinate just hits players. Her works. Reaper can kill. Oh, Beast Within is a catch all. This. Blood Artist, Jared. Burnished Heart, Courser, Dictates Killing Creatures, Space Below It, <clears throat> Archfiend of Depravity can kill creatures in that it, it's very good at catching up against the Go Wide decks for our Grave Pact and Dictate, you know, if they're suddenly down to just two creatures, a lot easier to kill what they have. Oh, I guess so. I'm still not 100% sure I want this. It's only really good against the go-wide decks to keep them in check. That way our other things don't let them get ahead of us. Because one of the biggest vulnerabilities of Yigra is if it doesn't have Trample, if the opponent can just keep chump-blocking it forever and put pressure on us, then, you know, it doesn't matter that we can kill the other two players as much. There's one player that's kind of safe and secure from us until we find a way to push Eager through. And none of these are killing creatures. Or killing our opponent's creatures. Smothering Abomination is killing our creatures. That's okay, it's giving us stuff back in return. Anglehorn, Galta, Journey No. <clears throat> Cabra, yes. Slimefoot, Assassin's Trophy is a catch all. His only doesn't kill opponent's stuff. Midnight Reaper, no. Citadel, Casualties of War, yes. Uh, Dreadhorde General Ken. This does kill two creatures. For each player makes some sacrifice so we all get to decide what we're losing but as long as i have something besides eager out to lose to it very comfortable throwing away two of my creatures in this deck murderous rider is removal themes blight priest scoop mob I am the old gods, yes. Egrid, no. The Bloom. Mortality Spear. 15 entries. <clears throat> but Massacre is 16. Titan can't kill creatures. Script, Shelly, Terra Sunder, 17, a Poisoner can kill a creature, we certainly have enough life gain where that's in danger of being a thing, so, 18, No, no. There's not a removal spell. Skeletons is not a removal spell in and of itself. Or is Vein Ripper? Nope. Elia, Heaped Harvest, Ray Leader, Talent. I have to double check. I think Talent might be a once per turn trigger on the food. Gathering doesn't kill creatures. Pantry doesn't do anything to hurt anybody. Draws me cards. Brewmaster down. 
Cascade Mage, Dark Prophecy, Trading Post, Hanger Back, Tainted Remedy, No, <clears throat> Veto, Death Reap, No, Dogmoth can kill stuff, he's very slow at it. I don't know that I would consider I have him more in the deck as a card draw engine and sacrifice outlet. The fact that he can kill creatures slowly over time, unless they're like X1s, is good. But it's not the primary or even secondary reason he's in here. It's free sacrifice outlet that's drawing me cards. Uh, that's... A way to sacrifice my creatures and a way to draw cards are his two primary functions. The fact that he will slowly kill creatures over time. Again, if they're not X1s. If they're X1s, then they're just dying anyway, but have that much trouble killing random little creatures the rest of the deck, so it's not like he's going to make it in on that merit. He's also not getting cut because of his inability to deal with creatures. It's not his primary reason for being in the deck. If you were a little better at killing creatures, I'd have him on this just to remind myself that he's also a creature kill spell that we're almost definitely running. Tell the Profane. Yeah, maybe we should have that on the list just to remind myself we have one more creature kill spell. Also, 19 out of 24. <clears throat> Saga isn't... Killing our opponent's creatures. It's killing them slowly, but... Black Market, Haslin, Jahira... Scavenging Ooze, Toxic Deluge is... Brings us up to 20 now. Isa, Maziric, Maziric, Zyrek? I have no idea how to pronounce that thing's name. Ikra. Technically, I have no idea how to pronounce most of their names, but I'm going with, you know, what looks likely, whereas that one I'm just like, yeah, it's not meant to be pronounced by human mouths, stupid bug monster. Pest Infestation, new no. Ice Catcher, Pippin, Ion. This is two, and then I make a one three. Nope. Death Claw and Atomize. Yes. Up to two, one. Ooh, which of the Moors? I guess. Like, it's definitely in here because it's making opponents lose creatures. So. Alright. So our creature kill. Making sure there's nothing else hiding under Grave Pack that I've forgotten. Feed we'll two. Yep, okay. So Savra. Damnation. Beast Within. Reaper. Dictate. Archfiend. Ravenous. Trophy. Casualties. Lily. Rider, Binding, Melody, Heat Hook, Tear Asunder, Drop, Fell, Deluge, Atomize, and the Witch. Alright, so this one is actually shorter than our, um, whatchamacallit, our artifact and enchantment destruction list, so it's probably good for us. I 
I'm wondering if I want to cut Archfiend. The biggest problem with uh, cutting the Archfiend is that we need Yigra to be in play for our mass removal to kill all of our opponent's little creatures unless it's Damnation. And if we have Yigra out, I kind of don't want to pull the trigger on Damnation unless it's absolutely necessary. So Reaper is a... Or not Reaper. Archfiend is a reasonable middle ground to that where it's like okay i don't have to kill all of your stuff because this will get you down to two creatures it is at their end of turn so they know they're going to lose everything anyway so they can just like throw it all at me if they need to yeah you could probably lose the arch fiend i think it's one of the less impressive things on our list oops not copy that's okay fixed it fixed it everybody um, I wonder if we actually even need Ravenous Chupacabra at this point. We have a lot of other things that are killing creatures. Like, we have three different things that when my creature dies, everybody else loses a creature. I think the idea behind Ravenous Chupacabra is I wanted creatures that did things so that way... I would have access to more foods to grow Yigra. Because it's not like we're blinking stuff or even recurring it all that much. As of right now. I wonder if we have enough cheap stuff that I could consider Chthonian Nightmare. I don't think so, is the problem. You need a lot of ones and twos for Nightmare, so that way you can build up an energy stockpile while swapping back and forth between creatures for value. Like, you know, if we have things like the Grave Pact or Morbid Opportunist or, um, you know, anything else besides Yeager where the creature constantly entering and leaving is giving us stuff, because Yeager's going to get that regardless. Um, then we can build up an energy stockpile, eventually start getting things back like the Ravenous Chupacabra in order to just kill stuff. <sighs> Going to do that, though, I don't know that we would need Ravenous Chupacabra specifically. We have a bunch of other things that can kill stuff, like the Deathclaw and whatnot, and... That thing's, what, a six drop? Yeah. So it's not like it's... It's one more use of Nightmare before we can do that, basically. There's also the potential that we don't want Liliana because we don't go super wide, but we currently have a bunch of Token Makers, so that's not even true. We can go super wide at times. All right, we definitely don't want the Archfiend, I don't think. We have Deluge and Damnation as our board wipes for just creatures, and we also have Deed on the list. I'm wondering if uh, O-Stone wouldn't be better than Deed here. The upside to Deed is that we can wipe everything below Yigra's casting cost, and that leaves a lot of things in play that we can use. Like, if we can wipe all of the little things, that usually will leave us with enough um, ways to still kill their big stuff. Like, if we don't kill Yigra or Dictate of Erebos, and we wipe, like, all of their little creatures, and we lose a couple things, that's probably going to kill the big creatures also. We do need to get into a position like that, though, where killing all of the little stuff is good enough, and there will be times when that's not true, and there will be a few times where we can't kill the things we need to, because we don't have enough mana. Like, D does have to get up to the casting cost, so... You know, whereas O-Stone, we could play and crack O-Stone immediately and kill things like the two legal Emrakuls, um, things like that, whereas we can't really deed away a 12 or 13 mana creature.
I mean, we can, but that's... To do it in the same turn as we cast it is like 15 to 16 mana, and I don't see that happening. It is nice, though, that we can sculpt with Pernicious Deed based on what we have and what we need to keep. That's the problem. There are going to be times where Deed is better because I get to choose, and there are going to be times where Deed is worse because I can't make the choices I need to because I don't have the mana necessary, or my choices were awful anyway and I just spent way more mana and now I can't do anything else this turn because I had to Deed for my entire available mana. Now, granted, playing and cracking O-Stone in the same turn is, like, 8 mana, I believe. So, it's still a lot of mana. But there would be times where I might be able to cast one of my, like, one or two drop creatures. You know, one of the ones that, when it dies, I can get it back later on under the right conditions. Okay, so I'm definitely set on Archfiend. Is there anything else on this list that I know I don't need? We're ramping with land, so I'm a little more inclined to keep binding than normal. A lot of times I'll let binding go because it's sorcery speed, but since we're ramping with lands anyway, um, that's helpful. And giving Eager Death Touch, if it, we've already managed to give it Trample, means that it will almost definitely kill somebody. Like, Eager's Titanic a lot of the time. I don't expect to get into positions where I have Yigra, it survived this long and can attack, and it having Death Touch and Trample doesn't put it within range of killing an opponent in one hit. Definitely see losing the Poisoner. We have a bunch of life gain effects, but... Some of them require mana investment, so casting this thing in the same turn can be a little bit rough. Which of the moors is part life gain payoffs? Addition to killing creatures. Yeah, okay. So all we've managed to do is get rid of the Archfiend for right now, but I think that will be fine. All right, fine. We'll put in more letters. That'll find it. All right, delete the Archfiend. Come back up here. Drop it down to 206. Yeah, having the list still helps. I don't know, paying close attention to my mic, I don't know if it's picking up everybody in the background or not. Sorry if you're hearing people yell to each other or vacuum cleaner. Usually nobody else is home on days with me, but through today, so. But anyway, as I was about to start saying, um, I really need to figure out like which version of Yigra we're building because I have cards for too many different versions of Yigra. Like, we have a very, very aristocrats build potential. Um, we have uh, life gain as a sub theme matters. We have a lot of cards that benefit us from. Our creatures being artifacts we don't have a lot but we have some and they're really strong when that's going uh, things like mirror works <clears throat> uh, the Sanrith thing um, even teething wormlet is growing 
and gaining life, which, again, feeds back into the life gain thing. That's the other thing. The Aristocrats also feeds back into the life gain sub-theme by having it be, oh, my creature died, so you guys lose life and I gain life. <clears throat> so there's a lot of that going along, going around, and there's a lot of overlap between all of them. <clears throat> But we don't have enough room for, like, 99% of it, seems like. Yeah, as amusing as Infernal Genesis is, I don't think we need it. Like, yes, we can give opponents a bunch of creatures and then kill all those creatures we just gave them, but... ...seem to be essential. We have Dawn of the Dead for recurring our creatures too. Fairy, Greyborn Muse. All right, I missed Decree of, or I was about to say of Annihilation. I did not miss Decree of Annihilation. I did miss Decree of Pain. The list down here. Oh no, Decree is after. I took that off the list before I accidentally count it as something I've cut. Are you done? Well, can I? Well, too far. Decree again. Disciple, Glissa, Lightning Greaves. <sighs> Pendavis is only good if we're going to do the um, Aristocrats things, I think. Like, paying two mana to put two counters on our commander is a fine thing to have, but on a seven drop, I don't think it's that strong. So, I think we need to have the other aristocrat stuff going on where we're not just um, putting two counters on Yigra for two mana. We're also very rapidly killing our opponents. If we cut the other aristocrat stuff, that thing will definitely go. But if we leave that in, then I kind of think it has a spot and the potential to make it into the deck, which I would enjoy because it's one of those really weird, obscure cards that nobody's going to remember what it does until they're looking at it. Like, oh yeah, I kind of vaguely remember this thing from you know, 15 years ago. Keeping Jared for right now. All my creatures are so easy to sacrifice that I'm always tempted to do the aristocrat stuff outside of um, the Grave Pact effects. Like, that's the easiest thing to do when you're doing aristocrats, but all of the drains that are more normally associated with that style deck also become a lot more interesting. And the fact that we're gaining life by sacrificing them as food and for draining the opponents and triggering the various life gain effects. Like, I'm wondering if I need Smothering Abomination, Midnight Reaper, um, Dark Prophecy, like, I might have too many of those effects, even if we do go the route of my creatures dying, I get a thing. And... Marionette Master might be too expensive for what it's doing. Honestly, Galta is just a big dumb dinosaur half the time, and I don't think we need her.
part of me wants to cut the journey, and part of me is like, I mean, if you're not going to run Nightmare, then spending five mana, effectively six, because the land has to tap to activate. So spending six mana just recur one of your creatures is probably worth it at that point. We're not counting it as a land, though, so it's still taking up a spell slot, because it has to get onto a creature, and then that creature has to die while it's enchanted, and the enchantment has to make it to the graveyard and then come back. Like, getting the creature killed in response to the enchantment being put on it, or having it get exiled during the trigger before it resolves. Also having it get killed before I find a way to sacrifice if I don't have Yigra out already. And the mana available to sacrifice the creature it's on. Maybe a 5-drop 2-2 two two. that's giving me a free 1-1. One one. It is a free 1-1 one one every turn, which is way cheaper than, say, Verdant Force. But at the same time, it's a 5-mana 2-2 two two that gives me a 1-1 one one every turn. The upside, though, is that it's like three creatures, four creatures per turn cycle, depending on how many players there are. <clears throat> Which, aside from uh, Witherbloom and Burden Force, I don't think there's any others that make it, that are in my color combination that make a creature for me every player's turn. So. Slimefoot's probably going to be able to go, but I need to make sure I'm not keeping a whole lot of Sapperling Makers first. Because it gets a lot better as a mana sink if I also have a ton of Sapperlings going on. That's the problem. All of these cards, like, there are a bunch of cards that synergize really well really well in this deck and if I can get rid of all of them at once basically then we would have a huge chunk of the cuts we need but we're also losing out on a very interesting build for the deck I suppose we get rid of Marauding Blight Priest like if we want this effect at such a small impact, I think we want Dina, since at least she has a built-in sacrifice outlet that's cheaper than eating them as food. Yeah, she can spend one to just sacrifice a creature whenever I need to. And she has the when I gain life, opponents lose life. So the Blight Priest is probably the weakest out of all of the ones that are still doing that. History, Cult Conscript, Shouldred. Shouldred's another one that can go if we get rid of certain synergies. Like, she's primarily in here actually to gain me life for drawing cards because we have a whole bunch of cards that's like, my creature's going to die, so I'm going to draw a card, so I'm going to lose some amount of life, but now I'll gain life with Shouldred, which will trigger all the life gain synergies. Also, my creature just died, so I'm probably draining you with that one, too. Like, if we keep going down that route, we have so many cards to feed this effect. I'm not sure that I want to do two builds for Yigra, is the thing, so I kind of want to see if there's a hybrid build first. Maybe Ginger. Maybe we don't need her. The problem is, is that she is a food, and she's a decent body, and she also grows slower than Yigra does, but that's okay, because she's also a lot cheaper. Let's 
Skeletons is so easy to turn into a Demonic Tutor. Granted, it's a 4-mana Demonic Tutor over 2 turns, but we got any value out of the creature other than being able to sacrifice it to set up the Demonic Tutor portion of it, so probably still worth... Probably have enough other tutors we don't actually need pillage the bog. <sighs> so Honor Dray Leader is a three drop that's going to get plus one plus one for each non Yigra creature I control. And every time another one of my creatures enters, it's going to get a counter. Like, I think that's probably better than Galta being occasionally a 2-mana 12-12, but sometimes not. Although a lot of the time when Galta's a 2-mana 12-12 is when the Dre Leader is going to be at its best anyway. It's going to be rare that I have a ton of food. Just check Scavenger's Talent while we're here, because I think... Talent. It is once per turn. That's what I thought, and I need to add that in because that is very important. Because we will be losing a lot of creatures in a turn... So, it's important to note that I only get one food per turn, no matter how many creatures die. Alright, so one, two, three, four. Let's go cut those off the list. And the 202. Clear that off. Put a dusk morn, as we were right at. Thing. Grab Hazel's Brewmaster before I forget again. Here. Bottom of the list. Head off, head back to Dustmorn. Oops. Grab out Veto. Sanguine Bond, Cultivate, Grave Titan, Reassembling Skeleton. <sighs> Honestly, no matter how wide we're going, we probably. Probably don't need Steel Overseer. Like, I feel like Steel Overseer goes in the deck where we change up the build to care about artifacts positively, at which point in time I probably need, like, a Manifold Key, both to untap things like the Steel Overseer to rebuff all of our creatures and to make Eager unblockable. Probably lose the Steel Overseer then. So Death Reap Ritual, Bramble Sovereign, Hermit, Yogmoth. Three Chatterfang gives me X squirrels. I make X other tokens. Ray Keeper. Let's 
So the squirrels are really good if we decide to go with Amelia, who works very well with our commander. The saplings are good if we keep Slimefoot, especially if we're going aristocrats. Um, the Eldrazi... Don't know that we actually need the Eldrazi. Like, maybe the Modern Horizons 3 stuff, like... Uh, Path of Annihilation can go. Propagator Drone is fine because it doesn't care what tokens I have. And everything I have is basically making 1-1s, one so... Wait. Does Springheart Nantuku make saprlings? I think I might have misquoted that one. I think it makes insects. Yeah, it's a green insect, not a saprling. Yeah, I think my brain just auto-corrected to saprling there, but it is an insect. That's one less saprling maker for Slimefoot. So most of my creatures, I'm looking at Babola Saga, most of my creatures are going to be artifact creatures. The other thing about her is I don't necessarily have to sack three permanents with different types. Like, if I really desperately needed to kill a bunch of creatures while I have um, any of the Grave Pact effects in play... Just sacrificing three creatures with her might be worth it. I doubt we're going to get into that situation very often, so she does kind of need to be drawing me cards, but it's pretty easy to lose one of our artifact creatures and a land at that point to draw... Because we get to draw three cards, so presumably we're going to find more land... So we're not gonna, and we ramp by finding lands, not by casting artifact ramping sources or creature ramping sources. So it's not like our ramp overlaps with one of the two card types we're already throwing away consistently. And that's assuming that we don't have an enchantment we can spare or Planeswalker that's about to die anyway that we've gotten like one last uptick out of. And it's better to get the extra cards than it is to save a few points of damage by distracting somebody into attacking it. know that we actually need Haslin. We didn't bother with Tough Cookie, and that's actually making a food, but it can also only animate our artifact tokens and our other non-creature artifacts, of which we have very few. Whereas holes in here can turn our squirrels or sapperlings or insects into 4-4s four that are also bears. being said, we probably don't need him. We need Jahira, though. Is all of our stuff tapping for green mana going to be relevant? It might be. There are going to be times where the deck just needs a ton of extra mana. Might be worth it. I also don't know that we need Arcane Signet, honestly. I think that was just a holdover because I almost always include Arcane Signet since I'm usually ramping with artifacts. I think Soul Ring stays, but we can get rid of Signet. I don't think we bother with Mana Crypt either. I think we just ramp with the land fetchers for the most part. Also, we probably lose um, Scavenging Ooze for Necrogenesis. The life gain is nice, but I think the Genesis making one ones that we can then lose to grow our commander is probably better.
Zarak is fine for right now. I don't know, is Ikra win more when I'm already, like, loaded down with enchantments that are killing our opponent when I gain life, and my creatures are getting through for damage anyway? It does help, like, if we can get through against one opponent, we can put all of the life gain causes life loss to an opponent in equal amounts against the other players that we couldn't get damage through against. But I don't think that's entirely necessary. And god, do we need cuts, so... Yeah, let's get rid of Ikra. Um... All right, Theme Amalgam also makes the things. I forgot about that one. That's why it's on the list, too. It does also drain my opponents when the stuff I've stolen dies, since I'm manifesting their top cards. Boom is too on point. Uh, three to cast, three to equip, makes a bunch of one ones. I don't need scepter. Like, if we're hitting and we're making that many creatures, we're probably already winning. There will be times, though, where one opponent just isn't vulnerable, and so being able to go wide against that player by killing one of the other players and making 20 tokens. going to be relevant, but I think most of the time, if we're giving Eager Trample, we probably want, uh, like, Shadow Spear or... Even the one aura, more so than we want to bother with Scepter. Also, Scepter can randomly get swept away by our stuff, so that just makes Shadow Spear better because it's cheaper. Yeah, you know, we can get it down and have already gotten some hits in with it, ideally. As far as making a body per player, I think a lot of our other things are doing it better. It's like Bonks is out having fun. Great unclean one. Cut that from the list. Eight cards we've cut now. We scroll back up. So it's 194. Roll. Getting close to time, but we have have to go through a few more things. Um Yeah, sure, let's pull our ramp and see what we have in that pile. We'll eat up the rest of our time and let us see if we actually need to cut a few of our Ramp spells to make room. Ramping growth. Brave Pack, Survival. Wood Elves is a ramp spell. Sure. Yeah, I don't really count Black Market as a ramp spell so much as... <clears throat> like, it does not get us to the mana we're trying to get to. It makes sure that in, like, the mid to late game, mana is a lot less of an issue for what we can do. Like, it's not letting us cast our, like, five, six, and seven drops normally. It's letting us go, okay, let's equip this and buy back this, and do all of this all in the same turn. Like, it is making mana for us, but it's not ramping us to anything, if that makes sense.
Yeah, there's a few cards that are like that. Like the there's like an artifact from one of the commander sets that you tap and you put a charge counter on it and then add mana equal to the amount of charge counters on it. And it's like that's kind of ramp, but eventually it gets to the point where it's just like, no, this is just like how much extra mana do I need to do everything in one turn? Okay, we tap this thing and, and we do it's in the same way that omniscience is not ramp, these cards aren't ramp. Um just because it's letting us cast some spells for free. That's kind of how I view um, things like Black Market. Is once it gets going, it will let you cast a bunch of stuff for free or, you know, ignore a few equip costs or other activated ability costs on your turn. But it's not really ramping you at that point. I don't know if I'm explaining that the best I could. Like, it's giving you mana. How is it not ramping you? Kind of like, I don't need to go from, like, 5 to, like, 8 next turn a lot of the time with this deck. So it's not getting me to stuff sooner. It's just that now, on my next turn, after sacrificing a bunch of stuff for value, I'm going to have 8 mana instead of 5. So... But that mana is all going to go away if I don't use it. I'm going to be inclined. Like, I'm incentivized at that point to use it to do stuff. But I'm not casting it so that I can cast, you know. Like, I'm not putting it down so that way I can get out a faster Galta or something, even if it were still on the list. Or to get to Pentavis sooner or something. Wait, none of these were ramp cards. Well, I got distracted by my own ramblings. Look like it. That brings us to Sad Robot. Thomas Reach, yes. Eve, yes. Seek, yes. Search for tomorrow, yes. Maybe search is gonna go. I can cast it on turn one. Well, suspend it on turn one. <clears throat> that does have the potential for a much faster start. But if I have enough other ramp spells, I might be able to get rid of that one. Even Elf, yes. Oracle Moldaya, kind of. Especially with all of my fetches and my top and everything. I can usually find lands with this. <sighs> to be honest, all of them make the Eldrazi spawn slash Scion cards are definitely on here more for the bodies than the mana they're capable of producing. The fact that I can sacrifice them for mana is going to be relevant some amount of the time. So I can use them like little colorless lotus petals. But I'm also more inclined to just use them, <clears throat> excuse me, as a free way to sacrifice something at faster than instant speed since they're mana abilities. I don't know that I would consider them ramp. Waking Zone definitely can be. Like, that one's constantly churning out creatures. It's a three drop. So, yeah, I guess kind of. But Pawn of Ulamog, like, I'm. Even though I can sacrifice my things, I'm not normally going to sacrifice them to get a creature that I can then use for the mana. <coughs> Like, I might be able to use them for mana, but I'm mostly using them as free sacrifice outlets to make sure I'm triggering my stuff. Uh, Burnished Heart is ramp. 
Corsair less so than Oracle. Like, Oracle is giving me extra land drops and giving me ways to find land. Um, Corsair is just giving me potentially extra access to a land without giving me extra land drops, so I don't know that he's actually ramp at that point. Yeah, from beyond being four mana. <clears throat> like, I can see Awakening Zone actually getting me to the mana necessary to cast stuff. I feel like if I'm waiting around for... Um, from beyond to get me the extra stuff that I need. I'm probably too far behind at that point. Sifter is the same as Pawn of Ulamog. Didn't pass anything, right? Because we did go through Zendikar and there's nothing that's getting me lands that I want. No? Okay. I'll have to double check. Yeah, Plunderer, same problem. Like, my stuff is dying, I'm getting treasure. But that's more because my stuff is dying and I want to have the mana to do stuff later on if I need it. Like, I'm not putting him in here with the idea that I'm going to cast him, a whole bunch of my stuff is going to die, and then I'm going to have enough mana to do stuff next turn. <clears throat> Casualties, Karn, Lily. Um, Gilded Goose's ramp. Like, it is in here because it will make mana and makes food and then turns food into mana, so. I of the Old Gods, kind of. Like, it's in here because it gets me a land. Like, the slowest ramp spell in my deck, but... I am actually using it at that point as ramp to get to my fifth land. If I can't find it naturally. Or to my sixth land if I can find my fifth land naturally. <sighs> Witherbloom... Can do a huge burst of mana, but again, that's not really why we're running her. We're running her because she makes a bunch of 1-1s that are going to gain me life. Like, a 1-1 that gains me life when it dies every single turn. So, 3, maybe 4 per turn cycle. And then we can use the 10 life to get all of our mana back from our lands, if I need to. Again, she's more in here for the bodies than she is for the um, doubling my mana for lands I control. These are getting mana. History, no. Puts the land in my hand, not onto the battlefield, so I don't know that... Steel Seeker isn't ramp, it's just making sure I hit my land drops. Just not quite the same thing. Just now notice how experimental... There we go. <laughs> Not realize how badly butchered that was. Um, Sweet's Revenge only lets my things add mana if Yeager's already out, and by that point, that feels more like the um, black market type of effect than anything else. Skeletons, Vein Ripper. Keep 
harvest his ramp. 17. Forager is ramp. Great visits. Just a 19. It's 20. Graves, talents. This hermit, master, or apprentice, rather. Yeah, Jahira is in the same boat as the other ones, where it's like, I, I go from already having kind of enough mana to having way too much mana. Also, I think it's a little hard to count them as ramp when they require setup before they even give me any mana whatsoever. Maybe that's the problem with them, is that why I'm having trouble explaining them. is like, Black Market, I can play it on turn 5 and not get any extra mana next turn if I can't sacrifice my creatures or don't want to. So... And a lot of them fall into that category where I'm not just going to throw the creatures away... That's true, I might be going a bit too fast, because I believe Doric gets me a land from my deck, so. It's 21 out of 24. Alright, let's go down here. Yeah, I think we'll just add the cards to the list down here, but then we'll call it there since it's past the hour mark now. At least we have something to start with next time. I double clicked it and it didn't load in the thing. It was rampant growth. There we go. What else? Granger. Alright, it's bad enough when you made me double click for everything. I don't appreciate you making me triple click for things now all of a sudden. was the last one all right so we'll end it there for right now we'll pick back up with the mana fetching and such to figure out all of our ramp but that's going to do it for me for right now so thank you for watching and i will see you next time good rest of your day